Now we explain a causal broadcast algorithm that is based on vector clocks. It runs on the field silent model and the algorithm differs from the one we described before because it waits to deliver a message until all causally preceding deliveries happened. That's why we call it a waiting algorithm. So here is the main idea. As we said before, each broadcasted message carries a history and before delivery, we ensure causality. The first and second algorithms were based basically on a history that is the set of all causally preceding messages. Now, the algorithm that we are going to show now is based on the idea of vector timestamps or vector clocks. And the idea is as follows. When you deliver a message, a message will carry with it a vector clock. And that vector clock tells about the number of deliveries that happen before that message on each process. And the idea is to make sure then that messages indicated in the vector clock has been delivered before you deliver that message. Let us see this idea in detail. We represent the past history by a vector clock and the vector clock is slightly modifies as follows. So a vector clock, say we have three processes. So, and that is at process PI. The field at the position I in that vector clock is the number of messages that PI has causally broadcast. So this is the number of messages that this process has causally broadcast. And the other elements of the vector where J is not equal to I is the number of messages PI has causally delivered from PJ. So for example, here, you are going to have the number of messages broadcast by P1 and causally delivered by, in this case, PI equal P2. And the basic idea is that when a process causally broadcasts a message M, it piggybacks the vector clock that it has locally and does a reliable broadcast of the message M. What is sent is a pair which is the vector clock and the message. Now, let us look to the fields of that vector clock that is sent. So the vector clock associated with the message M at the field R is the number of messages causally preceding M that are coming from R. So these are the number of messages causally broadcasted by R and has been delivered at that process. So upon reliable delivery of M with this current vector, VCM, the process compares its local vector with the vector associated with the message M. And it only delivers M once the vector clock associated with the message is less or equal the local vector clock, which would mean that this process does not deliver if the vector clock associated with the message M is greater than the local vector clock or if the two vectors are non-comparable. And you remember the non-comparability. So let us explain this with the following example. We have a message CM broadcast by P2 with the following vector clock. A vector clock that has the values 1, 2, and 0 associated with the message M. And the vector clock at P1 has the following values. Vector clock at process P1 has the following vector values. So first, let us see. So this says that before M, it has delivered one message 
from P1 two messages from P2 where this message comes from and zero messages from P3 and here is the vector clock at P1 say it have already seen two messages locally one message from P2 and zero messages from P3 now these two vector clocks are incomparable because this value is less than this value on one vector but this value is less than this value on the other vector which would mean p1 still has to wait for one more event from p2 because this has to go up to 2 until it can deliver this message m so you the situation where we cannot deliver the message m immediately but if p1 has the following vector clock which is two two and zero then it knows it has received all messages from p2 also its own messages and therefore in this case the vector clock of p1 is greater than or equal the vector clock of associated with the message m so let us see now the execution of the algorithm by an example where initially we have all vector clocks are zero so each element in each vector is zero and here is a situation then where p1 broadcast a message m1 it carries with it its vector clock and then it delivers m1 locally so it increases its vector clock so now the vector clock here increased now p2 got the reliable delivery and it sees that the vector clock in the message is less or equal its own vector clock therefore it can deliver the message and then increase the count of the delivery from p1 now p1 does a next broadcast it carries in the message of this broadcast the previous vector clock so it carries this value and then delivers locally the message and increases the vector clock that's fine now p2 delivers the message m2 because again the vector associated with the message is less or equal the local vector at p2 and it increases the delivery element in the vector from p1 now let's look to this one this is the case where what do you have you have a message m2 m2 has this vector and it is delivered reliably at p3 but p3 did not see this event coming from p1 therefore it has to wait until the event is delivered reliably here and once it increases the first element in its vector clock it can now deliver m2 so this is the example so let us now go through the implementation of the vector clock based algorithm so we assume that we have a set of processes pi and we have a vector at each node where each field is associated with one process and they are initialized to zero and each process keeps a sequence number and a set it's called pending and this is a set of all waiting messages that are not yet delivered so when a process does a reliable causal broadcast the first thing it does 
it makes a copy of its own local Victor clock and it assigns the current sequence number to its field in that vector and then sends this vector with a message. And after that, it increases the sequence number for the next broadcast. So we, when any process gets a reliable delivery of the message with associated vector clock, it adds this pair from where it got the message and the data which is corresponding to the vector clock and the message to the pending set. And then it invokes the deliver pending. And what is deliver pending? Deliver pending is doing what we have just said before. Whenever there is a pair, a vector and a message in the pending set such that the vector clock associated with that message is less or equal the local vector clock. It removes it from the pending set. It increases the field in its own vector saying that I have got one more delivery from the process SM, the source of that message. And then it triggers causal delivery. So 